Hey everyone, Sean here back with another tutorial video. And in today's video, we're actually going to be going over some basic solidity and solidity is the programming language used to generate and create smart contracts. And in this video, what we're going to be going over is some of the basics of solidity. So we'll first go over what is solidity. Then we'll go into creating a very simple smart contracts and going over things like variables, functions, operators, conditionals, arrays, and mappings. So with that being said, let's jump on the computer here and get started. So on my computer here, I'm actually on Solidity's documentation and we'll link this down in the description below if you want to check it out as well. But you can see here Solidity is an object oriented high level language for implementing smart contracts and smart contracts are programs that govern the behavior of accounts within the Ethereum state. So what we're going to first do is let's create our smart contract and using third web CLI, we can actually create our environment and everything to create our smart contracts. So I'm going to open up my terminal here and I'm going to run MPX third web create contract in here. I can name our project. I'm just going to name this a solidity smart contract. Um, you can select your framework to use so you can use hard hat or forge. I'm just going to set this up with hard hat here and we'll be able to name our new smart contract. I'll just call this a uh, basic solidity smart contract. Then we can select the type of contract we want to start with. I'm going to start with an empty contract uh, just so we can go over again all of the basics that we're going to cover on solidity. Once that's done, we'll change into our project here. And we'll open this up in our code editor. And in our code editor, you'll see this contracts folder and you'll see this contract.so file. And in here, you can see this is going to be our smart contract here. So when creating a smart contract with Solidity, you'll specify your license identifier up here. Uh, you'll select a what version of Solidity here that you want to use. So you'll start that off with Pragma, then you'll follow that by Solidity and then the version of Solidity that you want to use. Next, you'll have your contract and you have your contract name. Again, we can just name this a uh, basic Solidity contract. Uh, we'll get rid of this constructor for now. We'll go over that in a bit. And this is going to be your basic structure of how you start off creating your smart contracts. Now, the first thing we're going to go over is variables. And the first type of variable that we're going to go over is something called state variables. And for state variables, you're going to have things like string. You'll have booleans. You'll have uints. Oops. You'll have int. And then you'll have address. Now a string could be something like a name. So we'll just put a solidity here. A Boolean is going to be like your true or false. So we can say is ready. Uh, we'll, we'll say false here. Uint is going to be for integers that you want to use uh, unassigned integers. So this is going to be positive numbers. Uints can't go negative. So we can put like uh, age. And we can set something like 10 integer. Unlike uint, you can have a negative numbers as well. So we can say like your balance is going to be negative 10. And then your address here is going to be for your contract addresses or wallet addresses. Uh, you can assign them to the address state variable. So we can say uh, maybe owner and then have a wallet address or contract address associated to that variable. Now state variables here are going to be accessible throughout your contract. Whatever you set as your state variable, you'll be able to use throughout your contract, whether you need to use it for functions or anything else. Now the other type of variable is going to be your local variables and local variables. We can put this example function here. We'll go through functions a little bit later throughout this video, uh, but we have a function here called local variables and essentially what this function does is we have a variable here that we created called local age uh, that is within this function and this local variable for this local age is only accessible within this local variable function. So state variables again are going to be accessible throughout your whole contract. Local variables 
are only accessible within the function which they are created. Next thing we're going to go over is variable visibility. So there's three types of variable visibilities. You have public. And for that example, let's say we have a string, we can make it public, which means anyone can access and view this variables value here. So we have a string, which is public. This variable's name is public name. And our value for that is going to be solidity. So and again, anyone will be able to access this variable and view its value. Next, we have private. This is where only the contract can access the value of this. So if we do string private private name, this private name variable here is only going to be accessible within this contract itself. No one else looking at this contract from the outside will be able to look at the value of private name. And then finally, we have the internal, which is only going to be accessible within this contract or any contract that inherits this contract that we create. So again, you can set that by using the internal and an internal name here. This is only accessible within this contract or any contract that inherits this basic solidity contract here. And finally, with the variables, we have something called our global variables. And these are going to be global variables that you can access through any smart contract. So some of the examples are msg.sender, msg.value, you can get the block.timestamp, transaction origin, you can even get the address of this contract here and check the balance. Uh, if you come to the Solidity docs here, you'll be able to view all of the global variables here. So you can see you can get things like block chain ID, which gives you back the current chain ID. You can get the block Coinbase, which is going to be the current block miners address. You can get msg.sender, which is the sender of the message. You have msg.value, number of way sent with the message. And again, all of these are accessible within all smart contracts. Next thing we're going to cover is functions. So we have two different types of functions. We have a read functions which are going to allow you to read data on top of the blockchain. So we can create a function here called get name. You can see here that we have public, which is similar to the visibility that we went over in variables. We'll go over the visibility again here for functions in just a bit. Uh, but we have a public function, which means anyone can view and call this function. We have view here, which means that we are going to be viewing or reading data from our smart contract here. And we have a returns, which is telling us what should we be returning, what type of value. So we can state here that we're going to be returning a string. And all this function does is return our name value here. So if we look up, if we were to return name, it should return us solidity. And again, read functions are functions where we can read data from our smart contracts. Next, we have write functions, and this is going to be for writing data or updating data on our smart contracts. So maybe we have a function called set name. In here, we take the argument of a string and something called our new name, and this function is public, meaning anyone can call this function and view the function. And what this function is going to do is set name to the new name from the argument that we provide here. So whatever string we provide with a new name, it'll set the name value of our name variable to new name. Next, we have function visibility. So similar to our variables, we have public, which anyone can access the function. So anyone will be able to view and call the function here. So let's say we have a function here called public function. It's public, which means anyone can call and execute this here. And we have peer here, which means we're not accessing or manipulating any variables in here. All we're doing with this function is returning this string here. So that's why peer is used here. And we have returns because this is going to return us a string. And all this function is going to do is return a string that says public function. Next, we have private functions, which again are only going to be accessible within this contract. So we can have a private function. Again, we have peer. This function here would only be able to be called by, say, other functions within this contract. Next, we have internal. 
This again will only have this function accessible within this contract or any contract that inherits this contract. So again, you'll just use internal and then we can use that within this contract or if anything inherits our basic solidity contract, uh, they can also call this internal function here. And then lastly, we have external, which is a visibility that we don't have with variables. So if we have an external function, only another contract will be able to call this function here. Next, we have function modifiers and a few different modifiers we have is view. So we've seen some of this already. So view, if we look back at our read function, again, view returns us a read only value. We're just viewing and reading data from our smart contract. So we have a function here called view function. We can say it's public. Again, we use view. We have to add in returns because we need to know what type our value is that we are returning. And in this case, we are returning a string because we're going to return our name variable. Next, we have peer. So again, this is going to be read only as well. So we're reading data from our smart contract, but it doesn't access any state variables. So again, we can create a function that just returns maybe a string or a value that we need. Um, we can just, again, use peer, what type we're returning here, and then we can return uh, a value. Next type of modifier is going to be payable. This is going to be for when you want to receive or transfer ether within a function. So payable, let's say we have a function here that we need to transfer some cryptocurrency or ether. We can create a function called transfer ether that takes the maybe address that we want to send the ether to. We can make this public. If we add the payable, we can now add ether onto this function um, and we can transfer it. Uh, so we can say who we want to transfer it to and call something like transfer and then add the value that was with the message that was sent here. We also have custom modifiers. So we can create maybe a modifier called only owner. And we can use something called require here, which requires that the sender of the message or sender of the person interacting with this contract is equal to the owner variable. So if we come back up here, uh, if you remember, we have our address variable here, which is called owner, and we set a address here. So only this address should be able to call any of the functions that we use this modifier on. So let's say we create a function here called owner set name, and this function can only be called by the owner. So we can add our modifier that we created into our function here. And again, this now checks our modifier, our custom modifier here to check only owner. And what this does is requires again that the sender equals the address of the owner variable. And if it does, then we can execute the function here. And then finally for functions, there is one type of function here called constructor. This constructor function gets ran once when the contract is deployed and created. So whatever you have here uh, is going to be run once, once you have deployed this contract. So we can maybe set name to solidity or maybe set the owner here to the msg.sender. So whoever the deployer of the contract is, we can set them as the owner of the contract. So again, constructors are gonna be the, the function that runs once when the contract is created. Next, we'll go over operators. And for operators, we have a few different types of operators. Uh, you may be familiar with a bunch of these from different coding languages, uh, but we have arithmetic operators. This is going to include uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, increment, and decrement. And we'll also have uh, exponent as well. So again, addition, you can add value, subtract, multiply, divide, modulus, increment, decrement, and exponent as well. Uh, we also have a logical operators. This is going to include and, or, or not. And we'll also have comparison operators. So this is going to be equals to, not equals to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than and equal to. So an example here, maybe we have a function that adds two values that we provide it. So we'll take uh, value A and value B. It's public. We'll make it peer. And all it returns is a uint where we, re 
where we add A and B together. And then for logical operators, we can check maybe and, so we can check if two values uh, are both true, then we can return true. If one of them is false, then of course we get false. If both are false, then we both get false. And then an example of a comparison operator, we could have a function that checks if two values are equal to each other, and we return a bool whether if they are saying if they are equal to each other or not with a true or false. Next, we have conditionals. So this is going to be your if, else, or else if. And again, we could have a function that checks A, uh, returns, it is public peer, maybe returns a string here. So when we can check if A is greater than 10, then we return greater than 10. Else, if A is less than 10, we can return less than 10. And then finally, else, if it's not greater than or less than, it must be equal to. Next, we'll cover arrays. So we have fixed size arrays. So we can set a size of our array here. So let's just say this array here, we want to have five. We have dynamic size arrays. So we can create an array here with no value, meaning that we have, which means our array can be of any size here. Uh, with arrays, we also have your common array functionality. So we can have push here. So push, we can say push A, on our dynamic array, we're going to push A, which will add it on. We have pop here, so we can pop off the last value of our array. We have length here, so we can again get the length of our arrays. And we have delete, so we can maybe delete a specific value at a certain index in our array here. So we can provide it with a index value and say we want, say we have three items and we want to delete the middle item, we can provide it with index one and it will delete the value at index one. And then the final thing we're going to go over here uh, with basics of solidity is going to be mappings. So mappings is a key value pairing and we can create a mapping like this. So mapping, uh, we have maybe a number which is going to be used as our key. And each number has a value pairing of a string, which maybe we call names. So what we can do here is let's say we create a function to add a name. So we can create a function here that says add name. We need a uint. Maybe we're using this as an ID for the name. And then we need a string that we want to set as the name. So what we can do here is our names, which is our mapping over here, we'll set the ID number to the name that we put in. So let's say we put in ID zero and we change the name to Sean. Again, we're getting names. We're then signing the key zero to the string Sean. And then maybe if we give this ID one and the string Watase, then again, we would update the name the value associated to the ID to the string Watase. With mappings, we can also get value. So maybe we want to get a name. So let's say we create a function here called get name. We can give it a ID, which will be our key here. And then what we'll do is return the name at that ID, which will give us the value. So an example here could be that we add a name with ID one and name solidity. So again, if we were to add a name and we pass the uh, ID one with the name solidity here, that will get into our mapping. And if we were to use our function to get that value, we would get provide it with the ID of one and we will get returned solidity. Now we can also do nested mappings. So this is putting a mapping within a mapping. And let's say we have a key here um, or an ID and each ID has maybe multiple keys within that that give us different values. So let's just say we want to add a name. So we can have a function here which will add a nested name. We need two IDs here and then the name we want to nest. So an example here is maybe we can add a name with ID one and then ID two one will equal Sean. And then under that same ID, we can give it another ID two, which maybe will be a last name and then we can give it Watase. 
So again, we can nest these mappings within other mappings to store values that we may need later on throughout our contracts. So we've gone over some of the very basics of Solidity here. Now, what we'll be able to do here is deploy this smart contract. We'll use ThirdWeb here to deploy our smart contract. We'll then take a look at this contract in ThirdWeb's dashboard and start interacting with it so we can see some of these functions and we can read some of these values and variables here that we have set in this contract. So using ThirdWeb, we can run npx ThirdWeb deploy. This will one, detect our project type here. So it detects that we're using hard hat. It compiles our project. It uploads our contract metadata. And it should open up a window here where we can deploy our smart contract. We'll just select the network or chain that we wanna deploy our contract to, and we'll hit deploy now. We'll confirm the transaction to deploy our contract. And then we'll sign this signature request here to add it to our third web dashboard. We'll, we'll be able to interact with this contract. So once it's been deployed here, you'll be brought to your contract dashboard. We'll head on over to the Explorer. And in the Explorer here, this is where we'll be able to interact with those variables and functions that we created in our smart contract. So if we head over, you can see that we have two sections. We have our write functions and our read functions. And in our read functions, we'll be able to read all of our variables that were public and accessible by us so we can read say our view function here, uh, which is uh, if we take a look back at our contract, our view function here is a public view that returns a string, uh, which is gonna return the value of our name. And in this case, our name variable was solidity. So if we look here, if we look at our view function, it returns that value and we get solidity. We can write function. So let's say we want to add a name. So again, we can, this is gonna be for our mapping. So we give it an ID, so number one. And let's just say we want the name to be Sean. We can execute. Again, this is going to be a write function and we are writing data to our smart contract. So we are gonna to have to pay gas in order to do this. We can hit confirm. Now if we come back to our read function here and we hit get name, uh, this get name, uh, we can give an ID. Now, if I give ID zero and we run, we're going to get nothing, a uh, blank string here because we don't have any name set to this key, va key right here. Uh, but if I set it to one and we hit run, you can see here, we see the value Sean of what we just set right before this. So again, you can see how our read functions and write functions differ, how you can interact with your smart contracts. And again, went over the basics and fundamentals of Solidity and how you can start creating smart contracts. So there you have it. Again, this video was a very simple video going over the basics of Solidity so you can get started on your smart contract development journey. Again, we covered things like variables, functions, operators, conditionals, arrays, and mappings. And we'll be releasing a bunch more videos on our Third Web YouTube channel around Solidity and how you can create your very own smart contracts. Now, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about Web3 development, we also have a full Web3 development course showing you how to get started with using ThirdWeb's SDK to actually build front-end applications to interact with these smart contracts. And if you wanna check that out, we'll add a link down in the description below. But again, I hope you folks found some value in this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on more Solidity tutorials just like this. If you need any help or support, we'll add a link down in the description below. You'll be able to open up a support ticket with our support team and they can answer any of your questions and help you out. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video and until next time, see ya.